January the 18th, 1994 is a day I shall never forget. My daughter, Jessica Joy Lennon, came into this world. She was a beautiful pink chubby redhead. Kerry and I were over the moon. Our joy was short-lived. Jessica stopped gaining weight. She started to turn yellow. We were told by a pediatrician who held up to the light that she was fine and we were just being normal paranoid parents. He was so very wrong. At a few months old, Jessica was diagnosed with biliary atresia, a congenital liver disease. Jess's bile ducts were not well formed. As a result, all the toxins usually processed by the liver were spreading throughout her body, poisoning her. At this early stage in her life, she went to surgery to try and build bile ducts, an operation known as a Kasai procedure. The operation was unsuccessful. We were told by specialists that there was nothing more that could be done for Jess. With these words, the doctors in Johannesburg condemned my baby to death. While there had been successes in transplanting livers in adults in South Africa, a baby as young as Jess had never been transplanted successfully. We had to try. The alternative was too terrible to contemplate. We never had Jessica christened in the conventional way. We decided to give her back to our Creator and leave her life in the realms of spiritual power. We did not know how long we had with Jessica. She needed a liver transplant as a matter of urgency. Each day that ticked by was a day closer to terror for us as parents. Throughout these days, Jess showed her true spirit and strength. Idem Tanti was Jessica's nanny. During a prayer for healing which took place in our home with a group of compassionate people, Ida laid hands on Jessica. Ida's eyes were closed tightly as she prayed to God in Zulu to heal Numvulazan, or Rain Girl, Jessica's name given to her by Ida. I did not know if any God was listening to these prayers. I knew that my child would die unless a donor was found within the next few weeks. Through a series of events and some inexplicable miracles, we ended up at the Children's Red Cross Hospital in Cape Town. It was here that our baby would start a journey that was her last chance at life. On the 13th of September, 1994, that donor was found. As the father of a new baby, I had not been able to enjoy the normal thrills of early parenthood that a father usually has with his baby daughter. As I saw my child being wheeled away, the fear that engulfed me threatened to suffocate me. I did not know if I would ever see my baby again. The transplant was a success. The next few days were critical. Jess seemed to be responding well to all the post-transplant treatment. We were still both terrified that she would not pull through. The days spent in the ICU served tragedy after tragedy on our fragile minds. We saw Rahmat another child recipient of a liver donor fade away while we were in the same room. Her passing struck a deep terror into my heart. Then our worst fears came true. Jessica's body rejected the transplanted liver. She was given days to live. Kerry and I spent some time chatting about what life would be like without our baby. We were broken. The next morning, after having prepared ourselves to say goodbye to our baby daughter, we walked into the ICU with our lives lying in tatters on the shiny sterile floor. Jessica would not last the day. Then I learnt what a miracle is. A donor was found at the 11th hour. It was Thursday, the 22nd of September, 1994. The universe and my God, through the power of collective prayer and positiveness, had opened a door of sheer brilliance and hope. Jessica went into theatre that evening, and we waited. 
When Jess came out of theatre some seven hours later, she had a radiance about her. From that point on, we have never looked back. Jess, so much has happened over the last 17 years. There's no specific reason why I've made this little movie for you on your 17th birthday. I just need you to know that I'm so very proud of you. You must reach for your dreams. I, I love you so much. I, I just, I can't explain it to you. And your dreams are out there and they are waiting for you, for you to grab them and to capture them and to hug them and embrace them and live your dreams. You love you and you love me. Happy birthday, my daughter. From a father who will do anything for you. I love you. Oh, one last thing. This headline appeared in the U magazine at the time. Henriette Lopser, why don't you ask Jessica yourself? <laughs>